Hello, welcome to this video clip where I'm talking about uh, understanding neurodiversity, especially focused on parents. Uh, parents, what is it that is important to understand about neurodiversity? What is it and what do you want to know and how can it be helpful to you and to your child? So I think probably the best place to start with neurodiversity is with some terms. Let's start with uh, the term neurodiversity itself. What does it mean? Well, it's really kind of a big general term. It means the diversity of human neurotype, basically. Literally, it's neurodiversity, that among the human population, we just have neurodiversity that exists. We're just not all the same in our neural types and the way our brains operate and work and navigate. And so we have this thing called neural diversity. It's just another type of diversity like other types of diversity that exists. And then underneath this term neural diversity, we have two sort of uh, types, I guess, that are probably the most understood or talked about in present time, and that's neurotypical and neurodivergent. So neurotypical would describe somebody who navigates um, the society that they live in in the way that that society has created people to navigate the systems, the structure, the expectations, the norms, if you will, of what they want to see in that society, the neurotypical person navigates that with relative ease. Maybe those systems and those ideas come maybe naturally to their brain or without much of any kind of challenge and or make sense to them and anyway they just kind of go through this societal created this is what it looks like for someone to do think respond navigate in a quote-unquote normal way our standard right so someone who can do that and does that and it makes sense to them would be considered neurotypical neurotypical is a societal construct, right? Because it's basically just someone who goes along and follows along and can very easily with just the norms that have been created for that particular society. And this changes, of course, from one culture to another, one society to another. Neurodivergent would be someone, by definition, who diverges from that. So whatever that societal created norm or expectation is of a standard, the neurodivergent person would be someone who diverges from that. The way that their brain operates, the way their system operates, the way they process, communicate, respond, the way they navigate socially, the way they experience in terms of sensory and emotionally diverges from that societal norm. They want to do it in a different way and it manifests in them in a different way and it resonates for them in a different way. That would be someone who's neurodivergent. We connect neurodivergent often with a diagnosis, usually a, like a mental health diagnosis. So autistic, ADHD, sensory processing disorder, learning differences, Tourette's, intellectual developmental disorder, just to name a few, would be uh, certainly neurodivergent, right? And there's more and others, but that's giving you the basic idea. You don't have to have a traditional mental health diagnosis to be neurodivergent, but it is one of the ways that seems to more quickly get a child identified as neurodivergent is to participate in whatever process and have one of those diagnoses. Uh, so this is what we mean by neurodiversity, neurotypical, and neurodivergent. So we're talking about mostly 
neurodivergent kids. And if you are the parent of a neurodivergent child, we're kind of focusing on you in this video. So when we look at neurodivergence, we look through the lens of being neurodiversity affirming. Neurodiversity affirming is an approach. It's an application of understanding neurodiversity. It means that we get that there is a neurodivergent child here and we know that they don't have to be neurotypical and we're not trying to make them neuro neurotypical. We wanna be affirming of them being neurodivergent and we wanna help them feel good about who they are, build up their self-worth, build up their self-esteem, make them feel valuable, make them feel important. And we want to get rid of any thoughts or messages that come to them about you're bad, you're not as good as, there's something wrong with you, you need fixed, you need changed. These are the devaluing, self-worth killing messages that can very often be sent to neurodivergent children from all kinds of sources. And we want to stop that and we want to make sure that we're implementing neurodiversity affirming thought and language and processes with the neurodivergent child. There is something just inherently important about building up a child's self-worth just to be a foundational piece of them having quality mental health, feeling good about themselves, and avoiding all kinds of possible derailings of their social emotional self. We cannot build up the neurodivergent child's self-worth enough. This is something that really needs time and attention. It's a great parenting approach. It's a great approach for any therapist working with the child, that that is always something that's being done. We may be doing other things, which we'll talk about in a moment, like addressing needs the child has, but we're also always building up their self-worth, communicating value, empowering them, helping them to feel good about themselves. That is critical. So let's talk about needs. The neurodivergent child, that's a very big spectrum of presentation when I say the neurodivergent child. That means we can have many, many, many different kids with many different looks. And some of those kids will have more needs, some will have less needs. Uh, we could be working or we could be knowing, you could be parenting, I should say, a neurodivergent child who has very little to no needs. I mean, maybe they're neurodivergent, but they're just kind of navigating the societal system that they're in pretty easily. And maybe there's not much happening with them in that regard. You could have a neurodivergent child who has a lot of needs. Maybe they have a need for speech therapy and occupational therapy to address specific things going on with them. Maybe they have mental health needs and they need a play therapist or a child therapist to help them with those. Maybe they need some extra supports or accommodations in their education setting. Having needs is okay. Uh, it just means that we do need to attend to those needs. And as far as play therapy, child therapy, which is kind of what I'm focusing on, uh, we're really looking at does the neurodivergent child have any mental health needs? For example, but not limited to, are they struggling with depression or anxiety? Do they have some trauma issues going on? Uh, are they struggling with some life adjustment issues like a divorce or a grief situation or a transition that's very hard for them? Uh, do they have some social navigation needs like they don't really understand safety issues or they're getting bullied at school? Um, are they having some regulation or sensory struggles? 
there could be a whole variety of mental health needs that maybe the neurodivergent child is struggling with that would bring them into play therapy and then we would be working on those needs it's important to know that we're not working on trying to make them not neurodivergent we're working on whatever those mental health needs are that they're having and we're trying to help make that better and as I mentioned earlier, at least for me, and what I think is important for all play therapists, is we have this always goal of building up their self-worth. You just never go wrong with that as a therapy goal as well. So we're identifying what are these mental health needs. We're addressing them through our play therapy processes and interventions. And then of course, we're always staying affirming as we implement an approach let's say to address a trauma issue, as we implement an intervention to address an anxiety concern, we're still making sure that in the language we use, in the relationship we're building, and in that approach or intervention that we're implementing, that we're staying neurodiversity affirming of the child. That's really important because that's sort of the atmosphere that everything else that we might be working on or doing is swimming in or should be swimming in. So where are you in all of this as the parent of a neurodivergent child? Well, I think you can be and are probably in all of it <laughs> to some degree or another. I mean, you're the frontline person. You are the one spending the most time with this child. You are the one who is day in and day out providing the care, the help, the support for the child. You're also probably the person who knows the child the best. So I think it's important that you are understanding everything there is to know about your neurodivergent child and everything there is to know about what it means to be neurodiversity affirming, not just in your parenting approach, but with all the different therapies or programs or educational settings you're putting your child into, what do they know about being neurodiversity affirming? And you kind of being the lead out kind of expert on that, you've gotten the education, you know what it looks like, you know what it means. And so you can ensure that this is happening for your child. So in my work as a play therapist, and in the op play program or framework, if you will, we really try to encourage, you know, parent involvement. Parents certainly learn and understand about neurodiversity. Certainly you're implementing this at home. You're looking at your child through this lens, but also you're participating. If they are coming to a therapy, then you kind of know what's going on. And if it's important for you to be involved and participate, then you're doing that. If it's important for you to follow up with implementing things at home, then you're participating in that way. I think it's just always good for the professional and the parents to be partners in the process with the child. We kind of look at it in play therapy, all play therapy, uh, as three people are partners in the process. The therapist, the parents and the child. We're all three partners in this process. So we're navigating this together and kind of figuring these things out together as we go. So I just wanted to introduce the basic ideas here of what neurodiversity is, what neurodiversity affirming means, especially from the standpoint of play therapy work, mental health care, and also just some thoughts for you, the parent, on this topic. I think it's so important to learn so much more than we've covered in this short video, of course. Uh, and so we have created a resource sheet. Think of it as like a start guide for understanding neurodiversity and being neurodiversity affirming for parents, specifically put together for parents. And it's on the Alt Play Therapy website, information for parents under that tab. You can find this video and you can find this 
get started information sheet guide, books, videos, other resources for you to access to really dive further into this topic and to become much more educated on what this means for you as a parent and for your child as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Please check out that resource guide to take a deeper dive. And then if you're watching this, uh, we definitely appreciate a like on the video and also a follow or subscribe on the Alt Play YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.